back and um, we're in the next segment of the show and basically we've just covered Cheryl's main eating habits, what her diet usually looks like um, and of her family's eating habits as well. And what I'd like to do now is to give her a bit of feedback on how she's doing and also answer some more of her questions. So basically we, we just covered that skipping breakfast is not a good idea. Yeah. If you're doing it once in a while, it's okay. But we need to try and have two or three me um, meals in a day spaced out, which gives our body sustained energy in order to be pr productive and just feel um, energized as well. So your other question was about vegetables. Yeah. And you, you are very right, and I see this with a lot of clients and patients, that we tend to, to neglect the vegetables. Yeah. We make um, the protein the star of the, of the show, and we forget about the vegetables. So my advice would be to, to try and, and go with the vegetables that you know your family definitely enjoys, and to, to be creative with them. I'm sure you are ready, but to continue um, spicing them up and yeah. making them taste good and adding them or cooking them in ways that they haven't tried before, um, just to encourage them to eat more of the vegetables and and also go through or go for some meals without meat, um, any kind of animal protein. Like I think you mentioned you do sometimes have beans and rice yeah. or lentils and rice. Um, remember, I don't know if you're aware of that beans and lentils are actually a very good protein source. So you can sometimes leave out the meat and just focus on beans, lentils, vegetables, a little bit of grains if you want. And you can also add a bit of um, cheese, very little bit, but um, just to, to make it taste better. So yeah, definitely going with what, what you know they like. And, and adding a new vegetable every now and then, or something that that you know not everyone eats, um, just to encourage them to, to try it again. Especially with children, it takes a, a lot of um, attempts. You need to, to try and serve them a specific food over and over before they actually start to accept it. So, but, but it's, I think it's great that you realize the importance of the vegetables. And I just want to give you some feedback about your what we call the dietary diversity score. Great. So there are nine food groups in, in the diet that are especially nutritious and that we need for a certain reason. And if I look at your score out of those nine groups, you're definitely getting one for, from oats. Um, if you're not eating oats for the day, you can also get that point from things like rice, Brown rice is always best, but even white rice is also acceptable. Okay. Things like barley, have you ever cooked with barley? Oh, I love barley. I love right. to, cook a, uh, to cook barley a lot. We would have it like once, once a week as well. Wonderful. Yeah. So you would get a point for that. Or for things like the potato that you love, sweet potato, um, any of the starchy grain foods that, that are high in fiber. So you get one point for that, no matter if you've had it another time in that day, okay. you only get one point for it. Um, the other point would be from your milk that you would add to the oats, yeah. or if you have it in your Golgona coffee. Yeah. Um, even though there's a little bit of sugar in there, that's, it's okay. okay. Um, mostly the, the milk is, is the main ingredient, and milk is very high in calcium, and we need at least two portions of dairy a day to get enough calcium. So that one cup of milk is your one portion, your other portion you can get from a bit of yogurt or from a block of cheese somewhere in the day. And um, so that would give you two points. Okay. Your third point would come from your meat, fish or chicken. Yeah. Um, any animal pro protein or food actually has a lot more iron than our plant um, foods, plant sources of protein. Okay. And then you would also get a point from your spinach that you mentioned that you that you'd like. So any dark green leafy vegetable yeah. is a is a good choice in terms of the, the B vitamins but also iron and a lot of other not, um, vitamins and minerals. Um, and then any orange or yellow vegetable which you, you had this morning you said you had the oranges. Yeah. So that's already five and um, if you have beans, lentils or peanut butter or peanuts that would add an, another point. So I think in general, it's quite easy for you to get to six out of the nine food groups in a day. Okay. And when you're not having, for example, 
the orange vegetables, you can have an egg in its place and you're still getting enough variety in a day. But in general, the, the we have what we call food-based dietary guidelines and one of those guidelines is to try and have plenty of vegetables and fruit and what we aim for is at least one to two fruits in a day and um, three portions of vegetables and a portion is a half a cup of cooked vegetables or a whole cup of raw vegetables. So and I think you know by the sounds of things it sounds as if most days you do manage that yeah. um, when there's vegetables included with dinner. Um, Apart from that, I can't think of any other feedback at this stage. Anything specific you want to ask me about what we've discussed? Yes, um, we do buy a lot of smoothies and juices at, at home as well. Yes. I was wondering, well, I read somewhere that juicing um, fruits and veggies strip it of its, of its fiber. I don't know how true that is. Uh, what, do you, what do you think of Yes, of so that? definitely with juices, usually with a, with a juicer, the whole point of the juicing is to extract the liquid and yeah. it takes the fiber away, unfortunately. Okay. So it's okay for once in a while, but we, uh, on top of that, we still want you to eat your vegetables whole and fresh or cooked um, mm -hmm. in its whole form, basically. And that's where smoothies are a little bit more beneficial. If you do use vegetables and fruit in a smoothie, you bring the whole fruit or vegetable in there and you're yeah. getting all its benefits. Um, and, and often we are on the go, we don't have time to sit down for a proper meal. Um, that's already a mistake in itself. We should try and make time to yeah. have a proper meal and sit down. But if you are some days in a hurry and you really can't go, you know, don't have another option, then a smoothie is actually a great nutritious meal mm -hmm. in a glass because you're getting everything you need in that smoothie. Um, just be careful with trying not adding juices to yeah. it, rather use whole fruit, a little bit of low-fat dairy, either milk or yogurt or shikandela, uh, a little bit of peanut butter is a great idea, you can even add a quarter of a cup of oats, just a little bit yeah. um, to add that fiber, and there's so many things that you can add in a smoothie, even a teaspoon of um, seeds, um, any, any vegetables that work well in a smoothie, spinach, yeah. um, yeah, I don't know if you've experimented with that. Yeah, I have. I have. I add a lot of um, chia seeds as well. Right. Yeah, I hear it's very good with yes. protein, so I add that as well. I do peanut butter a lot as well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, if if the like if I'm not using a sweet enough fruit or if I'm using a lot of veggies that day, I'll add honey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. So it's very good a lot of that. Great. So that's great. And and you you heard from that dietary diversity score that I just mentioned. Yeah. Uh, many of those are very plain normal foods that we yeah. that we eat. We don't have to go for um, super healthy foods or foods that you only get from a from a health store. Uh, we can make the best of what we find in a normal grocery store as well. Yeah. We just need to be aware of the the variety and to go for for as much variety as possible. Anything else you wanted to ask me? Yeah, I wanted to ask um, the, the, the difference between honey and sugar, the way your, your body reacts to it. Is it, is it really, is there really a difference? Is it, yes. does, your, does your body react with the same way? Does it break it down the same way? Or is it just that honey is a bit more healthy or? Yes, so yeah. basically, all kinds of sugars, like sugar and honey, are yeah. what we call, um, they are carbohydrates and they are made of sugar molecules mm -hmm. that are kind of bound together. And sugar is made of, um, it's, it's a sucrose, where honey is sucrose and fructose added right. to it. So at the end of the day, the way the body breaks it down, it has exactly the same effect on the body. Okay. It, it gets metabolized, gets broken down into what we call glucose, which is the simplest sugar that we get. Yeah. The smallest kind of sugar which the body then uses for energy. So sugar will raise your blood sugar after eating it. And the same with honey, it will also raise your blood sugar. Okay. It also gets digested in, this, in the same way, the same speed. Um, the only difference between sugar and honey is basically that honey is a little bit more natural because bees make it. Yeah. And, but at the end of the day, natural is not always healthier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what I usually advise is 
it goes on personal taste. If you prefer the taste of honey, that's fine. You just need to be aware that um, we still need to try and use it um, sparingly yeah. and not unnecessarily. We can't think that we can have as much as we want. The guidelines are actually that um, for, for health, we need to try and limit added sugar to less than 10% of your total food intake for the day. Mm. So for most people, that's about maximum of four to six teaspoons of added sugar for the day. Um, and whether it's from sugar or from honey, it doesn't yeah. matter. It goes by per personal pre your preference. And yeah, honey does have some antibacterial properties, but it can't cancel out, you know, it can't really save you from bacteria. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are just some health benefits, but it's not, it's not major. It's, it's not major that it's not as big as that everyone needs to start eating honey. Does that answer your yeah. question? Because I was, I was under the impression that it's honey, it's healthier now, mm -hmm. instead of adding like I would normally add say one teaspoon in my in my tea, then since it's honey, I can normally eat like I mean mm -hmm. add like two or so. Exactly. Yeah, so I was under that that impression. Yeah. 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 That does answer my question. Right. Um another thing is baby meals. Mm -hmm. Like what do I need to focus with my seven month old? What does he need at this apart not from his meal that he that he takes? Mm -hmm. What what else? Yeah, like? that's an excellent yeah. question. So are you still breastfeeding or no I was unfortunately never able to breastfeed because because of the, the heart issue, yes. and the clots and so yes. on. Yes. Okay, so, um, and, but he is drinking formula? Milk. Yeah, he drinks formula. Right. So the thing is, from um, until six months, babies just need breast milk or formula milk. And from six months, we need to start introducing foods for them to get used to eating, to start experimenting with food. And um, have you started giving him any food yet? Yeah, we do give him the baby cereal, okay. that, the, the one that comes in a box, and yes. then we've started add, adding um, butternut, we do right. a bit of sweet potato. Yesterday I tried avocado, which he did not like. Okay. And yeah, I, I think, um, or oh, we give him oranges as well, he loves oranges, we'll just slice it up and have him suck on that. Wonderful. Yeah. So for, 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 for now, we've done butternut, we've done um, sweet potato, we've done, I think we tried carrot mm -hmm. and avocado that I tried yesterday and mm -hmm. the oranges. Yeah. Wonderful. So there are so many different foods and the old idea was that we should try and introduce one food at a time and give it time to see how your baby reacts. But in general, there's so few children that actually have full-blown allergies or real problems with food. So if you feel comfortable with that, you can start giving a variety of foods like you're doing at the moment mm -hmm. and, and giving, is it a he or she? It's a he. Giving him um, different foods that, that you, you are eating as a family, um, just giving him small portions and continue trying, even though he didn't like the avocado today, yeah. as long as he didn't react to it, you can always try it again in two or three days time. So there's no fixed guidelines whether you should, you know, give one food at a yeah. time. The, if you do see you start reacting to any food, then you can slow down and go back to only one type of food at a time. But basically, and from this age, they need food before milk. Um, so with every meal, when he's hungry enough, give him some kind of food to try. Mm. And he's not even a year yet, he's under a year. So about a half a tablespoon of each kind of food at a meal is, yeah. is perfect. And babies and children are really good at um, determining how hungry they are. So we don't need to force feed them. Yeah. And if they want more, we can always give them more. And then in between the meals, you can give him milk or straight after the, the meals, you can, you can give him his formula. He still relies a lot on his formula, but we need to start getting them used to eating as well. Does that answer your yeah, question? Yeah, that, that's right. a great help. The last question, what should a, say for, for dinner, what should a typical healthy dinner plate look like? Yes, good question. So basically we've got, as dietitians, we've got this plate model that we use um, to teach people what are the right proportions. Yeah. So if you look at a, a normal size plate, we should try and aim for half of that plate full of vegetables. And that's sometimes a challenge because yeah. vegetables aren't always as fresh or we don't get the ones we like. So we need to be creative and 
try and make the best of what we have. Even if some of the, that half is a little bit of beans or lentils, I believe that that is that's already a, a good good start. Um, and then from the, the rest of the plate, we need to look at it about about a quarter of the plate from uh, whole grains. So or any starchy food, so like a potato, sweet potato, brown rice, barley. Um, what else is there? A bit of pasta is totally fine. Quarter of the plate, and in the, the other quarter, um, we need a bit of protein, which is your lean meat, chicken, or fish. Um, so in general, we look at um, the, the palm of your hand is a good is a good amount. And yeah, so your husband's hand is a little bit bigger. You can yes. maybe have one to two yeah. um, small portions, but the rest of us, we need to work on, on what our hand. And yeah, I think that's where we as Namibians, we do tend yeah. to make some mistakes there. We love yeah. our meat. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not checking the palm of my hand and it's yeah. it's quite smaller than the, the portion of meat that I normally have. That's yeah. right. So yeah, we tend to overeat our meat in Namibia. Yeah. And the thing is that we don't, our bodies don't need that much protein. So what often happens is the rest of that protein is basically stored as fat in the body. And sometimes we're also getting a lot of added fat from that protein. And the fat from animal protein or animal uh, products is actually mostly saturated. It's the bad kind that actually yeah. increases your cholesterol. So, and often then because of too much meat or too much protein, we struggle with things like constipation, um, it, it just gives us a lot of bad digestion, not so good for digestion. So if we can eat in those proportions I've explained, yeah. it's actually best for optimal health. Um, and the last thing about the plate is that we need very little fat. Usually if you look at your thumb, that's the correct amount of fat that we actually need. And that's quite tricky. And yeah. you being a cook, you know that yeah. fat makes food taste it's so much so nicer. Yeah. So I always encourage people to use spices, herbs, onion, garlic, all those kinds of food, yeah. um, kind of ingredients to make their food taste better um, if you're going to cut fat. Yeah, talking about fat, I love butter. Mm -hmm. I'll fry my eggs in butter, I'll mm -hmm. add it to my soups to make it a bit rich. Mm -hmm. is, is it, should I cut back? Uh, yes, so butter unfortunately is, is high in saturated fat and it all goes about how much saturated fat you're eating for the whole day. Mm -hmm. So if you're very careful with, with your fat intake in general, a little bit of butter is, is okay. okay. Um, but if you're eating a lot of fatty meat, um, and eating a lot of creamy products, uh, full cream dairy, for example, cheese, which is very high in saturated fat, yeah. then you should rather leave out the butter. So it's all about a bit of moderation, <laughs> compromise, mm. but I know butter really does give flavor. Yeah. So you could also, a healthier alternative would be to use a um, margarine, which is high in, in unsaturated fats and mostly monounsaturated fats. Um, not all margarines are, are good for you. Yeah. A lot of them are very saturated and they actually have a lot of trans fat. But if you can look for one with a heart mark on it, which is mostly unsaturated. Um, but it just doesn't give that same flavor mm. um, to some dishes. So yes. I think, uh, yeah, good for me. Good for me. Great. So thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's very informative. Yeah. Okay. It's gonna be a bit difficult to get rid of the butter, but I'll try. <laughs> Just cut down a little bit. Yeah. 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 Great.